How's it going guys? Hope your day is going well. Today we've got a really cool video. Today we're going to be talking about handlebars, what I'm running for this year as far as the handlebar setup and all the controls and everything, as well as how I set mine up for uh, being in the backcountry. We'll be talking about different style handlebars, whether you're going to go with a Cheetah Factory or a RSI Racing or even keep the stock bars or even other different manufacturers of handlebars, as well as different mount setups, different heights, different grips as well as all the different accessories, both for brakes and the throttle. As you can tell, I'm kind of in a small space here in a little single car garage. I do want to give a huge shout out to my friend Chase that allowed me to use his garage to uh, film and make a couple videos in here. So thank you very much, Chase. He's actually got a really cool Duramax. I'll put a picture of it up right here, as well as his Instagram at the bottom. So after this video, go show him some love and follow him on Instagram. So from the factory, these stock low bars are pretty good. These are the uh, lowest version that you can get from Polaris. I think there's a low, a medium, and a high. If you don't want to switch from the OEM bars, these are a really good option. If you can find a set used or if they come on your sled from the factory. So for this year, I will be running a set of RSI bars. On my previous sled, I actually ran a set of Cheetah Factory bars. But this year, I wanted to try something a little bit different and try out the RSI bars. They're about 15 to $20 less. I think I got these for 87 or something like that. The uh, Cheetah Factory bars are about 105 to 110 uh, US dollars. So I got a set of the RSI they're the T610R-2 Boondoggler Tapered. Let's see how they work. So how you see my bars here is how I got them from my dealer. One thing I've noticed on my first couple of rides while riding, definitely my uh, brake is in the wrong spot. It needs to be over that way a little bit more because I like to have my hand right about here and grabbing right here on the uh, brake, there's like no leverage there. I like to have my pointer finger, my middle finger right on the edge here and having my hand right on the, the edge of the bar right there really isn't that great. So if you're gonna have these low bars, I'd recommend moving the brake handle and the reverse over probably about an inch or so just to get that extra leverage on the lever itself. So one thing that I've also seen in the past with a lot of people, what they do is with just the stock kill switch here, it works great. I've never liked the fact of having it here because I actually have on, I think it was my second ride of this season, I accidentally got pushed forward and it shut off. So uh, unfortunately I got stuck on that one, but most people just uh, remount them down here and that works great. Uh, I think I'll probably do that for this season. I used to have the RSI kill switch, which is just a momentary uh, switch where you just press and hold and it'll uh, kill the sled. But this year I'm just gonna run the stock one down here and save myself a little bit of money. As far as throttle, the one thing about this stock throttle block is it is fairly weak. I have seen a lot of people actually break these during the season, whether it's going through the brush and, and hitting it on a, a branch or something, or uh, they get pushed forward somehow and, and it busts it off or, or any number of reasons to uh, to break these off. So a lot of people go to the RSI. Uh, I know there's other manufacturers of throttle blocks themselves. Uh, one of the ones that's an up and coming manufacturer right now of throttle blocks uh, and it actually changes it to the front is Munster. He's up in Canada and it switches it around to more of a jet ski style to where uh, you're pulling with your finger like a jet ski instead of with your thumb because uh, when you have your, your thumb wrapped around like that, you get a lot more grip. A couple friends of mine do have that Munster throttle, which I have tried it before and I do like it. Um, I, I, may go that, I may go that direction in the future, but for right now, I'm just gonna keep the, the thumb throttle. One of the things I would say is that you do need to get used to that uh, finger throttle because the muscles in your forearm are gonna get a little bit sore after the first probably one or two days. So it'll take a little bit of time just to get used to it. As far as different options for the actual brake lever itself, there is one from Skins that's a heated version, which another friend of mine does have that and I haven't been able to try it out yet, but it actually does shorten it up a little bit. I have seen people actually shorten up the stock one, but the Skins one is a little bit shorter than this. I believe it's about an inch shorter, I wanna say. I'm not really sure, because I haven't had one in person to compare to the stock one uh, but it does look really nice it does look uh, very well made and i would like to try it but that'll probably be on like a future project uh, for now i'm just going to keep the stock one the other aftermarket accessory that uh, rsi and i think another manufacturer actually makes these uh, for an aftermarket uh, reverse switch I don't really see much point in replacing the stock one. On a friend of mine's 2016 Axis, it actually did fail at one point, so we took it apart. And I'm not sure what the cause was, but we were able to get it working again. I believe he did take it to the dealer and have it actually replaced because it was intermittently failing. So that could be a reason to replace them, but for now, I'm just gonna keep the stock one as well. 
As far as mounts for the new handlebars, there is a set from RSI that, that will accept an oversized handlebar. There is ones from Cheetah Factory. There is quite a few different manufacturers that have oversized handlebar mounts. The mounts that I'll be using for the oversized bars is these ones from, I don't remember the actual exact name of it, but it's a DCR, it's just a, a pretty basic brand. The RSI ones are about $35, and then the Cheetah Factory ones are about $55. I believe these were like 30 bucks, but they had really good reviews, so I'm gonna see how well they do and I'll report back. So the other thing that I will talk about real quick is grips. So for the last couple years, I have actually used these grips from ODI. They're the 8 inch Ruffian snowmobile grips. They will fit on the stock bars, but you'd have to cut them down quite a bit. I use them on the Cheetah Factory bars, which the Cheetah Factory ones give you quite a bit more space to work with. So these fit really well on those, and that's what I believe Cheetah sells, or they might have their own brand, I can't remember. These ODI grips have been so nice the past couple years. They have they provide a ton of grip. They've lasted pretty much the entire season. I did have one instance last year where they actually did fail on me and I had to replace them. And also for this year, I bought two sets of grips just in case one gets torn on a tree or something like that. I have seen that happen a couple times before, so I just bought an extra set since they're only like 17 or 18 dollars so the last thing i'll talk about is heaters the last two sets of heaters that i used on the cheetah factory bars actually failed on me they were just a cheaper brand they're the ones in one of my previous videos I actually had to use the stock uh, plugs to wire them up to the sled so these ones come with the connectors already installed so it makes it nice and rsi is a really good brand i think i had these on a set of handlebars three years ago and they worked great and never failed on me so i'm going to use them again on the rsi bars and just a side note these are the longer version that will wrap around the edge of the taper uh, for the bars they're not the stock ones the stock ones are only about that wide or so uh, so they're like that only about that big on the stock bars so these ones will be a lot nicer. And with that, let's get to work. So it's actually the next day. Uh, unfortunately, last night I ran into, while filming and trying to uh, do everything, I ran into a, a little bit of an issue. On the new 19850s, the connector for the heater grips is actually different compared to uh, previous generations, and I'll show you what I mean. So on the previous generations, you can see that it's a it's still a three wire plug, but it's a smaller type of plug. I don't know if you can really see there. And on the new 19850s, this bag, it's normally underneath the uh, overstructure here. It's normally directly underneath it but uh, they moved it to the uh, left-hand side here, underneath the panel here, so you have to take the, the intake off and then also uh, just disconnect the, uh, the panel here just in a couple places to get to it. But it's this connector right here that's for the heater grips. It's, the, it's different color wires, but it is the same three-wire system, obviously, but I believe it is weatherproof, waterproof, because Polaris's have been known to have uh, some wiring issues due to not being a uh, weatherproof wiring system, so uh, I think that's why they went to a better connector here. So for right now, I'm just gonna put the RSI handlebars on and wait for those new heaters to get here. And then uh, also put the brake and the throttle on and just wait for the new heaters to get here uh, so I can just do everything else at a later date. I just wanna be able to get this out of Chase's garage so it's not taking up too much space. Okay, so with these new mounts from DCR, you can see that it has a little notch here. That keeps it in place on the stock half mount here that I actually use to raise up the handlebars about, it's only about a half an inch, something like that. But I use that to kind of raise it up a little bit, but that little notch there makes it perfect. many months later. So I finally picked up a set of the new uh, heated grips. Now, of course, I went to install them yesterday and forgot that I need an air compressor so that I can actually install the grips for when I put uh, the shoe glue 
on. So we're gonna head over to a buddy's shop real quick. You've seen him in a couple past vlogs right here. Tie rods. So we're gonna head over to his shop and get everything installed. It should only take a few more minutes and we'll show you the rest of the process. sled in the shop. Now all we need to do is get these old grips off and then get to the bag underneath all the panels here and we're good to go. All right, so we got everything we need here. We got the two cork right here. We got the new grips, new RSI heaters, specifically for the 850 GH22 from RSI for the eight, specifically for the 850. We got shoe glue. I've used this one quite a few times actually for putting on grips probably three times now, I think putting new grips on so it lasts quite a while. I think it's only 10 bucks on Amazon. I'll link, uh, I'll link everything in the description though. 